Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to recreate the tree chopping mechanic from Valheim. We're going to make the player tree interaction with an axe and the different stages of the tree. Let's get started. I've set up a main scene with the player, some trees that we'll create in just a moment. I've also added a terrain, thanks to the awesome Godot terrain editor made by Zion, the link in the description. You could use a simple CSG box with collision enabled to replace the terrain if you want. The player is pretty much the same FPS controller that I've used in my other videos, with the camera pushed back a little bit to make it into a third person controller. If you want a real third person controller, I've linked in the description a short tutorial by Garbage and a very complete one by Johnny Rudor. Check it out after this video. I've also added an axe and we'll take a look at it right now. The axe is an area node with a rectangle collision shape on the blade. I've added a simple animation for the hit. For the script, I've added two variables, axe damage to control the axe damage and can chop to control the hit detection. I've connected the onbody entered signal from the area. If we hit a tree and we can chop, I'm calling the take damage on the body. I'm also playing a hit sound with a randomly scaled pitch to make it more pleasant. The animation is controlling the can chop variable, that way we hit the tree only when we press the action triggering the axe chop animation. For the tree, I've already prepared inherited scenes for each model I'm going to use. There's one for the stump, the full tree, the trunk and the log. Now onto the tree chopping mechanic. There are many ways to achieve the result from Valheim. I choose to make a scene for each state of the tree chopping. Each time you chop the tree enough, it disappears and instantiates the next step. Because all these scenes will share the same logic, I'm creating a common script from which they will all inherit. I'm creating five export variables that will be set in each scene. Next scene is the scene that will be instantiated for the next chopping stage. Health is the number that needs to drop to zero for the next stage to happen. This is useful if we want to have different axes with different chop force, for example. Impulse force is the impulse that will be applied when we instantiate the next stage. This is useful to make the tree move and fall. Impulse direction is a vector to choose in which axis we want to apply the impulse. Finally, origin offset is a vector to offset the instantiated object. This is useful for the trunk because its origin is in the middle of the tree. We create the tag damage function in which we return immediately if the health is below zero. Otherwise, we did use the damage and check if we're under zero. If it's the case, we'll call the die function that we'll now create. In the die function, we instantiate the next scene and place it at the spawn point origin with the offset. We then apply a central impulse with the impulse we define. We multiply the basis of the instance by the impulse direction vector to get only the basis we want. For example, if we want an impulse in the y-axis, the multiplication will result in basis x and basis c being zero and only keeping basis Y. That way, we make sure to apply the impulse in the Y direction of the instance. It's useful if the trees are not upright, for example. Next, we move on to creating the three scenes. We start with the full tree. I'm switching the root node to a static body. I'm making the root node part of the tree group and I'm adding the full tree scenes I've prepared earlier with the tree mesh. I'm also adding the stump scene. It will be used when we chopped off the tree. I'm creating two collision shapes, one for the trunk and the other for the stump. The one for the stump should be disabled by default. I'm also adding a position 3D node called spawn point and I'm placing it right on top of the stump. Now we create a script for the tree. Extending tree.gd we made earlier. We are going to override the die function. At the beginning we simply hide the full tree and disable its collision and do the opposite for the stump. Finally we call dot die to call the inherited die function which have the instancing and impulse logic. The next scene is the trunk. I'm making the root a rigid body as I want it to be physics based and I set up the rigid body with a higher mass and some angular damp to avoid lots of rolling. I add the root node to the tree group. Same as previous scene, I'm using the mesh scene and a simple collision shape. Quick tip, with the latest Godot version 3.3, you can copy and paste node from scene to scene. I go to the mesh scene, click on mesh, create single convex collision sibling, and cut the collision shape generated to use with my rigid body. 
I also add a spawn point. Now for the script. We are again inheriting the 3.gd we made at the beginning and similarly we are going to override the die function. We first disable the collision shape to ensure normal physics interaction then call the die inheritance function to get the instancing and impulse logic and finally use call deferred q3 to remove the object. I use call deferred instead of directly calling q3 to ensure Godot can finish what it has to do with the object before removing it. Finally we are creating the log spile scene. This is what the player will collect. Again, I'm using a rigid body to have physics behavior. I'm using a gravity scale of 3 to make the movement of the log pile a bit faster. I'm using multiple log meshes and arrange them to make a pile. Add a collision shape for the rigid body, make it pretty tight to the mesh. Then add an area with a collision shape. This is to detect when the player interacts with it, so make it bigger to be easily picked up. Add a script and connect the onbody entered signal. The first line makes sure the body is the player, otherwise it returns. There you can add your own logic, like adding logs to the inventory or something. Then use call deferred q3 to remove the object from the world. Now that we have every scene ready, we can go to each scene and set up the export variables. For the full tree scene, we choose the next scene to be the trunk. We keep health at 4 and the impulse force to about 150. It's pretty high because we made the trunk heavier. In the impulse direction, I'm putting one y at 1 and z at minus 1 to gain some diagonal force. This will make the trunk fall. We repeat the procedure with the trunk scene, this time choosing the log pile scene for the next stage. I'm lowering the health to 3 and the impulse to 8. I'm keeping the impulse direction at 1 in y to get an upward impulse. If we test the main scene now, we can chop the tree and the trunk will pop and after the logs will pop. If we run over the logs, they disappear. We can see the stump is still on the ground and we can collide with it. We've got a cool mechanic now, but we can add just a small thing that will make it even more interesting. I want the trees to affect each other when falling. For that, go to the trunk scene, add an area with a rectangle collision shape. Make sure it's big enough and connect the onbody entered method to the script. We return if the body is not a tree or if it's the parent area. Otherwise we call tech damage with a high enough value to trigger the other trees. And if we test it now we can see that the trees are interacting. I hope you find this interesting. Don't hesitate to share your project with me. If you're doing something with this, you can at me on Twitter or in the comments below. You'll find all the sources on my GitHub, link in the description. If you have any suggestions on how I'm presenting these tutorials, please tell me. Also, if you want me to recreate a particular mechanic, I'd be glad to try. For next week, I think I'll make a quick tutorial on a physics-based hoverboard inspired by Codier. Thank you for watching, see you later, bye!